Hey, it's been about two years since I've done a farm tour, so I want to give you guys the updates on everything we've done so far here in the farm. New buildings we got, the pond, quickly go over that, and then I'll show you how I do winter pigs. I, I do about uh, 30 pigs right now, and got a, lots of different types, and we'll go from there. So here behind me, we have a compost pile that I just pulled out from the pig pen. And so what I'm doing is I'm t moving the pigs periodically throughout the winter. I'm using all this wood chip and then I'm cleaning out the pens pretty frequently so it doesn't stink. The pigs get brand new wood chips almost weekly and I get a ton of compost. So this is my first or second batch right now. I got to pull out more. And then back that, further out there, you can see uh, that one's com almost already uh, completed. And that soil looks amazing. I looked at it under the mi microscope. And so potentially I can make more money from the compost than the actual pigs for pork. So I'm pretty excited about this whole system. So you can see with this uh, latest pile, we're cooking at 145, 150 actually. A little bit over 150. And at 160, you really want to turn the pile, re-aerate it. I got to get more moisture in here and add more. But it just goes to show you, you know, this is usually would be a byproduct of raising pigs. Is actually another business opportunity and fresh compost here I can sell for hundred dollars a yard we're probably sitting on 10 10 to 12 yards right now just in this pile the other one over there is is roughly uh, you know uh, 50 yards over there so you know it's way more money than I'm making for the pigs that produce th this amount so it's pretty exciting 200 yards of wood chips and I got all this free from a local uh, tree company. So I've been building that up. I got it wet inside and it's cooking. I want to show you guys the temperature and how I tried to uh, work the system to make uh, heat for the greenhouse. This didn't work, but I'm going to have some amazing compost here. So here, you can see some of these are super uh, hot, others not so much. Always trying to figure out why that is. Maybe it's just different moisture levels. I'm not quite sure. And so I ran tubes through here inside this pile to feed the greenhouse. I got a radiator in there. I'll show you later when we check out the tomatoes. And it didn't work. And then I used, over there you can see a big uh, drainage pipe. And I used that to pull hot air from the center. That didn't work out. Kind of figured out the kinks for next year. But, you know, for this year it is what it is. So here are my uh, piggies, my favorite operation on the farm. Uh, and usually in the summertime, they're going to get loud. Usually in the summertime, I have them on pasture with electric fencing, but I don't want them messing up the fields until they're ready in the springtime with good green growth. So I'm putting them in this kind of pen configuration. So I'll move them periodically. They'll stay in one pen. And I set it up in three. And then the center pen right here, and then the further back pen right there. So what I'll do is I'll quickly clean one side out and keep them separated and then just add more wood chips, pull out the other stuff, compost like you guys saw and it works great. It cleans, it keeps the pigs clean is what I mean. And so here in this section I have a boar. So I'm keeping them separated from the females until they're big enough to breed. And then I got about 12 to 14 pigs here ready for the spring. A lot of them are already sold pretty excited about that and then we're gonna have a, a bunch for the farmers market and I'm looking forward to that to change it up instead of just selling by the whole or half and see if I can maximize my profit there and really get my brand going the pain in the winter is obviously keeping the water from freezing and so I use one of these guys in one one set of tanks works really good but you just got to uh, continuously keep an eye on it you know certain things that can jam like right here and then your whole water's frozen in the morning it's just a pain you know pigs are pretty hardy you just got to always have fresh water for them feed and as far as varieties go i got kind of mix these are spot crosses with hampshire you can probably tell this is like a hampshire type and um we got some five mangalitsas in here which is my preferred pork for home consumption, but it's too lardy for most people. 
and that kind of turns them off from homegrown pork. You know, when you spend thousand dollars on a pig and you know you got three four hundred dollars worth of lard in that you know a lot of people don't value that it's changing and the meat on the mangalitsa is bright red which is really cool you, you when you eat the tenderloin or the back strap on on the mangalitsas it's like eating prime rib it's really hard to tell a difference so that's why i enjoy it and they're really hearty so i recommend that but just be careful because it's a lard pig you know most people like bacon pigs like these guys they end up getting pretty long there's some berkshire in, the, in these crosses for the feed i get uh there's a tr local tribe the south uh, mountain U tribes they have a 7,000 acre farm so they produce a lot of corn and this is called a corn byproduct it's when they're milling corn for human consumption you know to make your tortillas you get this fine powder and this is the byproduct of what what they call it and it works really great as pig feed because it's super fine and it just makes it easier the finer the corn the easier it is to digest for the pigs so it's a really high energy it's about twice the weight per bucket then i'll show you another local agricultural byproduct this is called uh, wheat shorts this is uh from the milling when they're making uh wheat for wheat flour you get this and this is pretty high in protein 14 percent so combining with a corn and then i mix in a uh, vitamin mix that i just get here at the local feed with that and then i add for warm protection i add uh, garlic powder and that works really great so i mean these guys are consuming so much food right now this is their growth phase so i mean they'll eat one of these full a day and i have two of them Plus, yeah, I use this kind of ghetto ghetto mix. Um, and it's working out great. And like I was saying, you know, it produces so much compost, the system. And it's really high quality stuff. I look at it under the microscope and I'm seeing the right ratios of what I like. And so I'm going to use a bunch of this out in the fields this summer. But, uh, you know, there's good money to be made from, from this, you know. And just like... Oh, it smells so good it's ready to plant and that's the big problem here on the farm it's just poor fertility on the ground you know we get about 9 to 11 inches of rain a year so it's pretty much a desert and just lacking soil biology so we just checked out the pigs and the compost I got going throughout the winter I want to show you guys real quick the greenhouse and then we'll do an aerial tour of what's going on on the farm we also completed a $140,000 project irrigation here. Uh, it was all paid for by the NRCS, which is pretty amazing. And essentially we got spring water from the hillside back, back behind me, as you can see, it's about a mile away. So we were able to plumb spring water all the way to the house. So that's what I use for this uh, pig water, the house, everything. I changed it, it's amazing. The quality's great. And thanks to that uh, grant money, we were able to get it all done. And then we changed the entire uh, gated pipe system before it's flood. And if you're not familiar with irrigation, it's just now, instead of flooding the fields with these channels, we put in big white tubes and that pushes water out into the fields a lot more efficient. So we're gonna save about 30, 40% more water throughout the, throughout the year. Um, going back to our greenhouse, I planted about three, 400 tomato plants and I had a mishap with the heating system and it completely destroyed everything. Half of the plants more and everything else got set back. So where I was looking to make about 10 grand in cherry tomatoes throughout the winter, that's not gonna happen. Uh, so whatever, it's farming, you learn. So here we're inside the greenhouse. Uh, we had another heating mishap this is not planned. Uh, someone forgot to turn the heater on and it nuked the rest of the tomatoes, which is uh, pretty upsetting here. We're going to get ready for hemp anyways. Uh, I got some pretty exciting stuff coming coming forward. I've um, been growing hemp for five years. We grew it on the farm. So that's kind of what I've been doing. And now I have a uh, CBD company where I sell my products from the farm. Um, and it's called Durango Botanicals pretty great product but yeah you can see going back to uh it just nuked everything that was alive still it's the first frost so it's unfortunate but that's what 
you know, farming is. You learn what systems work for you and what doesn't. Here on the heating side of it, this is where I was pulling the hot air. And it kind of worked, but it's just not enough. Um, and then the configuration inside the wood chip pile makes all the difference. And I messed that up. I realized afterwards through the wire or the uh, tubing that I also ran this half inch. This is kind of what failed. The half inch was too small, so it kinked inside the wood chip. And what I was doing was I have a pump inside that barrel. And I would pump it up through this radiator. It works really great. And it pushes the uh, difference in temperature out. And then what happened with that, um, you know, it just kinked, so it didn't work out. But uh, for next year, I'm going to figure out a way to heat this greenhouse for sure without any uh, excess heat or propane in the case. And for those of you guys that don't know, I have free heating from the uh, natural gas well that we have on the farm. So that's how I heat all this up. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. And I was thinking to myself, hey, you know, I could probably make an extra 10 grand. But that didn't end up working out with, with uh, heaters failing on me or getting shut off. This is my composty brewer. I use this. This does 150 gallons. This is the best farm tool for fertility. So you don't really need much to it. And I'll make another video on how to create these systems and pretty affordable for the fertility you get. And then I run uh, worms. So I use the worms, the worms castings for the compost tea. And the ratio of this type of warm, tea, uh, warm compost that I make is perfect balance of uh, fungal to bacterial. I don't feed too high nitrogen. I add a lot of carbon in there. And then I check with the microscope. And as soon as uh, it's at where I like it, you know, I put it in the compost tea brewer. I use kelp, humic acid, and uh, fish emulsion. And that works really great. Fish hydrolysate, I mean. So this part of the farm is where we grew crops. We had lettuce, tomatoes, all kinds of vegetables, and ornamental flowers. Everything we sold in the farmer's market. Those ended up doing great. And we had apple trees. Next is the pond area right behind the barn. This is the uh, five acre pond I built by damming it up. And right now it's probably like an acre full. And what happened there is that during the season when we're irrigating, it just doesn't hold enough water. It does leak through. Unfortunately, we're on a riverbed. So that's one of the things I'm working on, how to improve that, maybe run animals through there. It is a lot of space, so it's not like you can run a few pigs there. It does leak everywhere, but we are figuring out some affordable solutions we can do to uh, seal it up. So these backfields are where I grew hemp the year before. So I put in cover crops of uh, oats, barley, and sweet clover, and it really helped uh, recover the soil, improve the fertility. So we may do some hemp again, I don't know, but uh, really enjoy the cover crop. So that's it for the tour. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with some awesome farm tours this summer. Some here locally, some kind of far further away. It's going to be super exciting. Pretty excited to share that. Talk to you guys soon.